The Uncharted Territories is a podcast about seeing the unseen in the world of matter. Join me, Shara Prophet, the Mind Magic Coach, and my partner, astrologer Scott Tajirian, as we take an esoteric look this season into the life, death, and afterlife of a variety of celebrities and public figures who lost their lives prematurely or unexpectedly. What is up, Shara? I'm good, Scott. How are you? I'm doing well. Yes. I'm doing well, yes. Very excited to speak with you today, mm-hmm. as I always am. I'm always so thrilled to hear what uh, is going on in the in the realm beyond the material. Mm-hmm. And, uh, always something going on. <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm very fascinated with today's guest, or our case, the son of Bruce Lee. But it's like I, I almost feel sad introducing him as the son of Bruce Lee because he is his own person. He is, and he didn't really like that. No. So, so apologies yeah. to yeah. Brandon, <laughs> because Brandon was his own man, mm-hmm. and it was a life that was cut so short. Yeah. I mean, what he had done up to the age of his death he was already in his first starring role, Mm -hmm. multiple starring roles. Mm -hmm. And Bruce Lee, his dad, hadn't even done that at the age of 28. Yep. So it really feels like a life that was cut short. And I just rewatched The Crow last night. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the movie. Yes. I used to love that movie. I may actually watch it again now that I'm done with his reading. So Tell me. Tell me, what yeah. did you love about it? Um, I, Well, first of all, I love anything that has to do with like comic strip, things like that. So that movie is based off of an actual comic. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just liked the darkness of it. And it was just, it's, I haven't seen it in years, but I used to love it. And the soundtrack was. Oh, insane. Freaking amazing. Totally. Like you go, I mean, that takes I you. I still listen to <laughs> those songs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It takes you back to like, if, mm-hmm. if you're. If you're wanting to get a feel for the 90s. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the movie right yeah, there. Yeah, like the grunge and <laughs> the all grunge, of that yes. shit. It was the just music amazing. Is, yes. 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 And, and Brandon is amazing in that movie. He is. He's just so electric. He fills up the screen. I'm just getting the chills right now thinking about it because he was, he was magnetic. He's magnetic. You couldn't take your eyes off of him mm-hmm. in this film. Mm-hmm. And... It was really a joy to watch. Yeah, and I love the way it was shot because it was, uh, I think there was a director of a music video they pulled in, Mm. of music videos they pulled in to give like kind of that, that feel that feel to it. Mm-hmm. So I always appreciate it, like the way it was shot, the costume design yes. and everything. It's just, it's, it's a really, really good good movie yes you can put that one in the time capsule oh absolutely i feel like you want to know about the 90s the early 90s this is it right here yes indeed yes well so tell me tell me let's get into it let's get into it tell me set the scene for me i'm at shara's place (laughs) uh you know what does it look like what are you doing what have you brought in Mm -hmm. to call in brandon and and how does he present himself to you So what I've started doing lately is allowing for them to communicate with me to let me know that they're there Mm -hmm. with the pendulum. And how does that work? So basically, I'll just ask when you get here. Mm -hmm. There's a little hypnosis talk right there. I love it. I love it. (laughs) When you get here, just indicate yes on the pendulum. Mm -hmm. So a yes can be whatever for any person, but mine is clockwise. Okay. And so... Once I got that yes, um, I verified that it's really him Mm -hmm. and not some other trickster spirit out there trying to come in. And And how do you do that? I call in Brandon Lee, the person that lived as Brandon Lee here on Earth, Mm -hmm. and I will give the dates of birth and the date that they passed on. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm calling in the essence of that soul and only that soul yes no other souls no other spirits no other entities energies are allowed to come in right now okay and then i put a protection up around myself and around the environment yes so nothing else can enter in while we're having this conversation just to just to stay in integrity with the information the exchange of the energy so Mm -hmm. yes and he wanted water so i gave him water he wanted water (laughs) okay a glass of water so i gave him some water yes 
So did you set the scene with anything? Did you put on some of the the soundtrack of the crow or anything? Or you just sat in in the silence and then Yes, I actually did. I actually put the music on this because my time with him was spread over like a few days. Mm-hmm. And so like the second day I put some my favorite track on there is the Nine Inch Nail song. So Yes. And I put that on and that, you know, just kind of made him feel more at home, mm-hmm. more relaxed. But when he came in, it was so hilarious because I was trying to call his dad in first. Right. He didn't come. No. But Brandon, I felt he wanted to come forward. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because Brandon, in in his astrological code, he has four planets in the first house Mm -hmm. which is associated with the first sign which is aries Mm -hmm. so including his sun and his moon so being first okay you know i think that's uh important i'm glad that we're we're speaking about brandon first Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes okay that makes a lot of sense yes and when he came in he was wearing a a white t-shirt some blue jeans his hair was like neck length Uh uh-huh And he was sitting on a wooden bench. Now, I don't have a wooden bench in my home, Mm -hmm. but uh, he came in and and sat on a wooden bench and he kind of like interlaced his fingers and like cracked them like outward like this, like just kind of rested his hands behind his head. Mm. Like he was just kind of like, what's up? Let's do this. Chilling, relaxing. Um, And so what else was very interesting was that um, all of a sudden the scene switched to a white goat and it was one of these goats that have like the big antlers that kind of spiral downward Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. i don't know if you call them mountain goats or what Mm -hmm. i don't know but this goat was all white and was in like this wintry forest and it was like a bunch of snow everywhere and like covering the trees and so i asked him i said what's up with this this goat and he said that was him in his spirit form i love it you know why Because his ascendant, which is the essence of your soul, Mm -hmm. the rising sign, Mm -hmm. is Capricorn, Ah. which is symbolized by the goat. Interesting. And uh, his Venus, the planet of the senses, the Mm -hmm. planet of relationships, Mm -hmm. and his Mercury, the planet of communication, were also in Capricorn. Mm. So I can see why the goat would be his spirit animal. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so then then that scene switched over to a white lamp shade, one of those like small, like elegant looking white lamp shades. It was kind of like trimmed in gold and had like the white tassels hanging from it. It was just like on a wall, like over a mantelpiece. I was just like, what the hell is this about? (laughs) So um, he didn't really speak on the lamp shade. And I'm I don't know. I may need to ask him again about this, but it's still not very clear why he showed me that. Hmm. But he did say that the goat was him in spirit form and it represented being peaceful and wise. And he started doing like this. He took his two fingers, his pointer finger and his middle finger, index Mm -hmm. finger and middle finger. And you know how you kind of like point at your eyes Mm -hmm. as if like I have my eye on you Mm. type of a thing. Um, And he was saying I see or I saw everything. And with the horns pointing downward with the goat, he said basically that it's upside down world or an upside down reality. And spinning out of control, the reality of illusion spins us out of control, causes confusion and hides the truth. And you can't tell reality from fiction. But he says that I could, this is how he came in. So Mm -hmm. that's why I'm starting here. Um, He said, I could always see the truth that made me dangerous. I saw something I wasn't supposed to see. I'm going to leave it there and we'll come back to that. Oh boy. Yeah. You've got me on the edge of my seat, (laughs) Shara. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah wow okay mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. we're going into some some shadow territory it feels like yes so very interesting things okay here. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. righty so let's get into childhood yeah. yes yes 
So when I, I pulled some tarot cards on his childhood and what came up was the magician, which is all about the ability to create, the ability to transmute energy, manipulate energy, mm-hmm. um, which makes a lot of sense given how he was raised, you know, and the certain belief systems and things he was taught. Yes. Um, also, the king of wands comes up. That's confidence. So, Okay. Okay, you're you're hitting on some notes here. Okay. You're hitting on some astrological notes. The magician. Mm-hmm. The magician. When I think of the magician, I think of Scorpio. I think of the mm-hmm. scorpion. Mm-hmm. Scorpio is the magical sign. You know, Brandon, when you look at his astrological code, he only had two key points in Scorpio. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had Neptune, which is the planet of intuition. Mm-hmm. But many people born in the years surrounding Brandon's birth, were born with Neptune in Scorpio. His midheaven, which is the highest point in the sky, that represents his achievement, what it is he wanted to accomplish and achieve, that was in Scorpio. Mm. But the way that I see him truly as the magician is because Pluto, which is the planetary ruler of Scorpio, is in direct alignment, again, with his ascendant. His spirit, the essence of his soul. So even though his ascendant is in Capricorn, which is the goat, it's also like it is in Scorpio because it's in direct alignment with the planetary ruler of Scorpio. Now, the second thing you said was something about the confidence. King of Wands, confidence. Confidence, yes. yes. That, again, is those four planets in the first house. Mm -hmm. When you have Venus the planet of relationships and senses, Mercury, the planet of communication, Mm -hmm. the sun, which is the vitality, and the moon, the emotions in the first house. That's that's a lot of Aries energy. That's yeah. that's all about confidence. That's the house of personality. Okay. This is why he could light up a screen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Then the King of Pentacles comes up. That's all about wealth, mm-hmm. ruling over the earth, basically being able to survive in the material realm and master that. Wow. Yeah. I, again, you're you're. <laughs> <laughs> so you're amazing me right now because so he has what is called a grand trine. Mm-hmm. A grand trine is when you have three astrological points that are all forming trines with each other, which are angles at 120 degrees. So there's Pluto, which I mentioned connecting to the ascendant. That's that magician. But then Jupiter the planet of luck and expansion in Taurus, which is the sign that represents the material, is also in alignment with Pluto and the Ascendant. And wow. that's in his fourth house, which is the house of home, which mm. represents his family lineage, his roots, his upbringing, his childhood. So he was born with it. Oh, yes, he was. Absolutely, he was. And uh, the other things that came up was the King of Cups which is all about channeled creativity, the ability to balance work and play, and the ability to master one's emotions, okay? Mm. To be able to have like emotional intelligence and, and emotional maturity. And he said that this was something that both his mother and father instilled in him mm. through, through martial arts training and studying and learning how to just really ground yourself. And he learned this at a very young age. So this was something that he was able to kind of carry through with him throughout his life. Absolutely. Even though he did, you know, as a teen, he had some issues, of course, growing up. But all of that had a lot to do with the fact that he lost his dad at For a sure. very young age. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's yeah. eight years old. Yeah. Uh, but he, his dad was training him in the martial arts yeah. from day one. Absolutely. I mean, he was going on Hong Kong television shows at like five years old and mm-hmm. breaking boards. Mm-hmm. But the emotional intelligence, his moon is in conjunction with his son, one degree away from his son. So his identity in close alignment with his emotions. So that is a strong connection to the emotions. But both his son and his moon are in Aquarius. Mm. And Aquarius is 
the sign of genius. It's the sign of intelligence. It's the sign of detachment where you're not getting overly emotional about something. You're able to logically work your way through the emotions. Interesting. Okay. So that lets me know that this is right on target. <laughs> <laughs> also, what came through was the page of pentacles. So this is um, about studying something and becoming, you know, very well versed in it. And what he said was this was the study of the mind, study of the mind and self-control. Mm. Then the high priestess comes in with that intuition having that intuitive sense and just being fully tapped into that and just kind of knowing when to move, what to do, where to go. And then the lovers come through. And this was about dedicated relationships, love relationships, dedication to family. And the judgment card came in and also the 10 of cups, which, which represents happy family, stability, um, emotional stability. And um, however, when I asked him what his theme was for his life, it was hecticness. Hecticness. Mm -hmm. And being shuffled around a lot. They did a lot of moving oh, when yeah. he was a kid. So I read in Bruce Lee's biography by Matthew Pauly, Bruce Lee, A Life, it said that in his nine years of marriage mm -hmm. uh, with his wife, Linda, mm -hmm. they moved 11 times. Yeah. 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 That's a lot on a kid. <laughs> and he was born like in their first year of marriage. Mm -hmm. He was eight when he died. So mm -hmm. he moved probably at least, you know, nine, ten of those times. Yes. That's, yes. That's insane. It is insane. Yeah. And that was kind of the theme of his life. Just kind of hecticness, moving around a lot, being here, there and everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, even if he wasn't physically moving, there was a lot moving around inside and, of him. And that's difficult for somebody who is an Aquarius because mm -hmm. Aquarius is fixed energy. Mm. Capricorn is cardinal energy, but it's, but it's very rigid. Mm -hmm. So constantly being taken here, there from this place to that place, it can be unsettling Yeah, for a child. Yeah. Yeah. That's an Aquarius, Aquarius sun, Aquarius moon. Yeah. And I mean, and as a Taurus, I can absolutely attest to that. That's I fixed don't energy. like to move around a whole lot. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Same here. Taurus yeah. rising, Scorpio sun. Uh -huh. I like to stay Just stay stable. put. Absolutely. I've been in the same place for like eight years now. So. <laughs> yeah. I've been in my place for, yeah, nine years. Uh-huh. Nine years. Yeah. yeah totally. It's just like, mm, why move? Yeah. Unless I'm going to like the beach or something, you know? <laughs> yep. So, okay. So that was like the the makeup of him, mm -hmm. you know, I guess we can, we can say. And... He said they moved around a whole lot because dad was working and there was also he was dealing with a lot of prejudice as well. So there was like that kind of that seeing that and kind of being aware of that, mm -hmm. even as a kid, just understanding that there was a difference. Absolutely. With us, you know, mm -hmm. like we're different from other people. So from everyone, we got to kind of move to move to find the cheese type mm -hmm. of a thing. And he said that, you know, both parents studied martial arts. Um, so they taught him and his sister a lot about meditation and mental stability, emotional intelligence, mastery of self. And these are things that he just kind of carried with him. And so when his dad passed, when he was about eight years old, he said he was completely shattered. Oh, my like God. Like his entire world just yes. came crashing down. Oh Every, my God. Everything changed for yes. him. I mean, I, I watched the, the footage of the... The funeral service in Hong yeah. Kong, it's heartbreaking yeah. to look at his two children, but especially Brandon, because he's eight. Mm -hmm. The the daughter, Shannon, she's like four. I think she came along maybe, yeah, I think she came along maybe like a year and a half after he did or something. They were kind of like... They what? were four years apart. They were four years apart? Yeah, okay. she was four, so she. I don't think she really knew what okay. was going on. You know, it's a four-year-old. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, but, you know, the eight-year-old... Brandon, you can tell, like he's, you can see him, he's mm -hmm. shattered. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. His mentor died. It wasn't just mm -hmm. a father. Mm -hmm. It was a mentor. This mm -hmm. was the person Absolutely. that was teaching him yep. about life. Yes. And teaching him how to, to feel and mm -hmm. live and understand and see the world, you yes. know, a, a real father. Yes. A real father. Yes. You know, so. Um, well, you know, his, so his Chiron 
is in the the second house. Chiron mm-hmm. is the wound. The mm-hmm. second house is the house of security. Mm-hmm. So he has a wound to his security. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah, big time. Mm. And he said it changed their lives forever. So, and and I see this happening in the cards. It went from a four of wands to a four of swords energy. So four of wands is stability, happy family. It's the four pillars, the four walls. Mm, Everything is there around you to the four of swords, which means it's time to, to kind of rest and heal and if you look at the traditional Rider Waite tarot deck in the Four of Swords card, there's a coffin mm. with swords kind of pointing down and, and whomever is inside of that coffin is resting and get regenerated pretty much um, and heal and find a way to heal, mm. um, which is pretty difficult for a kid. Absolutely. So, and he said it required a lot of healing and a lot of reevaluation. He said he felt lost without his dad and he struggled a lot to find his path in life and also fighting against being Bruce Lee's son, like being called that, mm-hmm. but also kind of feeling like he needed to honor his father in some kind of way, wanting to be his own person, Yep, genuinely wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. But in his own way. But in his own way. And also there was some anger there for dad leaving, Mm -hmm. so to speak. Absolutely. That created that resistance to being like him, being called Bruce Lee's son. A lot of people were like, oh, he just wants to be his own person. Absolutely. But it was also that underlining anger that he needed to overcome. Mm -hmm. So it created this like push pull within him where he was trying to kind of go away from being the martial artist movie star like his dad was yes, and trying to do other things. And then also fighting with the need to kind of honor dad and do what he did. Yes. So that's a very frustrating, crazy kind of dynamic to have mentally. Yeah. Yes. And then he also said that he had some, he had hard feelings towards the art itself Mm -hmm. because he felt like it should have made him invincible. Mm -hmm. Learning that being that strong and being that controlled, he should have been able to overcome whatever it was. You know, this, this is what, this is what he's showing me inside of his thought process. So a lot of it was him being angry with his dad for leaving and then being angry with this art form that teaches you about power and respect and and strength and and then having someone as strong and as powerful as his father die. The most powerful. Yeah. Seemingly. And die from something that happened in the body. Mm-hmm. You know, like your body should have been stronger than that. That's what I'm hearing him. This is what the little kid in him was trying to wrap his head, mm-hmm. head around. Absolutely. Yeah. How can the this person that you're looking up to that's so powerful, so strong, mm-hmm. so invincible, how does he just die? Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Especially for an eight-year-old mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I see that his moon is squaring his midheaven. Uh, which can represent the father. It represents what it is you want to accomplish and achieve. And the moon is the emotions squaring off with the midheaven. That's like a fight. Mm -hmm. So I can see why he was emotionally conflicted in terms of what it is he really wanted to accomplish and achieve in this life. It's, It's like, I want to follow in my father's footsteps, but I don't want to be compared to my father. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you do? Mm-hmm. You, it's it's very difficult to kind of pull yourself out of that. And so then he goes on to talk about how he tried going to college for a little while. That mm-hmm. didn't really work out, yep. you know, and he tried doing movies that were not related to martial arts or fighting at all and didn't want to be typecasted because of who he was. Mm-hmm. So that that goes back into that inner conflict. He said that he was reflecting on the pain of the past after being in limbo, which helped him to form a deeper relationship with himself and his dad on the other side. Hmm. So being in that space because hanged man showed up in his reading, which is that time where you're just kind of in limbo. You're just trying to figure things out and getting in touch with that higher self. 
and just hanging out a little bit. And that gave him the time that he needed to kind of come to that conclusion that he was he was torn. He was conflicted Mm -hmm. and it was okay, you know, Mm -hmm. then he decided to go the same route as his dad. He just finally said, "Okay, look, let's just Just let's just do it. it. Let's just do it. And um, he also felt like this was kind of like avenging his father's death, so to speak, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. You know, um, carrying out what his father wasn't able to to finish. Yeah. Carrying the torch. Yeah. His life was very short as well. Yeah. He died when he was 32. Absolutely. And then trying to heal by way of redemption. That's what he said. I was trying to heal by way of redemption, hmm. which kind of ties back into that hecticness because it still doesn't feel, I don't want to use the word inauthentic, but it still doesn't feel like his true essence, if that makes sense. Yes. You know, I hear what you're saying. What are you picking up on that? Well, as an Aquarius, this is about being an original. Mm-hmm. It's about being unique. Aquarius is kind of an unpredictable sign. Mm-hmm. So to follow in the father's footsteps is somewhat predictable. Mm-hmm. So it's contrary to being unpredictable. Uh, but I think that, you know, doing the crow, that wasn't like a martial arts movie. I mean, there's violence and there's action, but he plays a a former rock musician right. who's murdered mm-hmm. and comes back from the dead to avenge his death and the death of his fiance, mm-hmm. who was also murdered. It does have that sort of martial arts theme, but the movie and the way that it's shot and conducted is not a martial arts right. film. Right. So he was working to move away from that. So I hear what you're saying where it doesn't really totally feel authentic. And when I'm looking at like his North Node, Mm -hmm. his North Node, the soul's purpose is in the fifth house, Mm -hmm. which is the house that's associated with the fifth sign, which is Leo. Leo's the lion, the sun. It's the center of attention. Mm -hmm. So being on the stage and in the spotlight is in line with his soul's purpose. Mm -hmm. However, it's also in Gemini. And when I think of Gemini, I think of creating space for others more so than creating space for yourself. It's like connecting other people. It's asking other people questions. It's staying curious. It's being the constant learner, learning a little bit about a lot Mm -hmm. and less focus on self. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. And I will tell you why. Because I asked him, did you really enjoy acting? Mm -hmm. Like, was that something that you truly enjoyed? And he said, yeah, I enjoyed it. And he said, but it was also the only thing I knew growing up. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. That's what I saw. Yes. And I asked him what his true passion would have been. He said audio engineering. (laughs) He said, I loved sound. Wow. So see, that's that's really interesting because Gemini is an air sign. Mm Mm-hmm. Sound travels through the air. Mm. So working in sound or music in some way, you know, like sound engineer, I think is somebody that's got a lot of different knobs to turn. Yeah. That's like a variety piece. Mm -hmm. And that's what Gemini is all about. Mm. So, you know, I just wonder if maybe he would have taken a less ambitious road of following his father and just gone to school to be a sound engineer. But maybe that would have disappointed some people. I don't know. I'm you not, know, because yeah. people are like, you've got, you got to carry the, you got to carry, carry the on torch. the torch. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Your father was a legend. You need to. Well, and Bruce, Bruce Lee's father was an actor. Yes. Bruce Lee was an actor. Mm-hmm. Brandon Lee was an actor. It's family business. Yeah. It's family yeah. business. And you just sort of generally do what you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I didn't feel that it, it's authentic in the sense that, yes, it's what you know. Yes, it's what you were kind of birthed into, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. But when we go deeper to find out like what was really the core desire is usually not the life that they were living. Exactly. Usually it's not. Yes. I do know that he was an athlete. Mm -hmm. Mars, the god of war, Venus, the goddess of love, and Mercury, the the planet of coordination. Mm. 
all three of these are in alignment with each other. Mm -hmm. Like this is what I see when I look at athletes. Mm -hmm. I see Mars in alignment with Mercury or Mars in alignment with Venus or one of those. There's a combination of, of two of those planets together and he has all three of them connected to each other. So that could also mean music in some way. I see that a lot of musicians... Uh, or maybe someone that's a sound engineer, you, you got to be coordinated. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot going on at once. So if you have trouble with two left feet, then you're probably not going to work well in the music business. But he right. certainly didn't have that. Right. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's pretty, pretty interesting. And he just kind of goes more into like honoring his dad's death. It feels like that consumed him. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like a martyr mm -hmm. type perspective. Okay, so that, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, Chiron, in addition to being in his second house, the house of security, is also in alignment with his ascendant. Mm -hmm. So it's like he had a wound to his material security. He had a wound in relation to his material security, his unconscious mm -hmm. as well, because it was in Pisces. And then also... His self-confidence, his identity, the essence of his soul, so to speak. Yeah. I just think that because of the death to his father, it caused a crisis of confidence and security. Mm -hmm. You know, despite the fact that, yeah, they had money or whatever, but that doesn't bring real security. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It brings a sense of security, but it's not necessarily... Uh something that's going to keep you not feeling hectic and and being dragged all over the place. Mm -hmm. The his thoughts alone were just like kind of not ripping him to shreds mm -hmm. but just kept him in a constant rechecking and rechecking and rechecking him of himself. So yes. So then I started uh asking him about his parents' relationship and everything, you know, and he said that it was um for the most part, it was a very happy childhood. Mm -hmm. They had a pretty loving relationship and both parents were very attentive and doting and taught them a lot. And I didn't see any other traumas or anything like that other than dad passing. Mm -hmm. That was the, the, the biggest trauma that, that I saw there. Everything else was just, it was very, very loving. There was no, no abuse or anything like that. I, I didn't pick up on any of those things. Um, all of the, the, the trauma happened after, you know, when his father passed and during his teenage years and he was trying to find himself and even in, his, in early adulthood, mm -hmm. trying to move through all of that hecticness and trying to find himself type of a thing, yes. you know, which I don't think he fully accomplished while he was in the physical body you know he hadn't yet reached that well yeah he he didn't even make it to his saturn return no he didn't so and that's yeah. that's the marker that i see for truly reaching adulthood mm -hmm. is when saturn returns to where it was when you were born and it was it was not there yet it was going to happen yeah. in the next year mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't make it that far so yeah. It's just one of those things where it just makes you wonder. Uh, what he what could have been. Yes. What he could have done. Yes. You know? Yeah. So do you want to get into his love life? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, because I know that was, well, he was supposed to be married like two yeah. weeks after he died. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Which is really weird yeah. because he was in a movie mm -hmm. where him and his fiance died mm -hmm. before the wedding. And mm -hmm. then he dies before his wedding in real life. Yes. And we'll talk a little bit more about the movie and on set and the energy around that film mm -hmm. and everything in a little bit. But yeah, immediately his fiance pops up mm -hmm. who he is still in love with. Still, mm -hmm. he still visits her. He still watches her sleep. He's wow. still madly. They were like madly in love yes. to the point where I don't even think she could be with anybody else mm -hmm. until like 10 years after he passed. I think I read that. Yeah. Um, and even then that didn't last. Right. That ended in divorce. So I mm -hmm. think that this is just a woman who's just going to probably. It's like lost at sea or something. Yeah. She, I'm, I, the energy that I picked up on her was very just kind of closed off to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Like there's no room, there's no room for 
really anybody else, Mm -hmm. you know? So this is why he goes back and he visits her a lot Mm -hmm. and, and and sits with her and watches her sleep and things because he Mm -hmm. knows that she's not really going to probably end up with anybody else, Mm -hmm. even if there is, she's not moving on. So she's not moving on. So she's, so he's with her. And, and I asked him, I said, what, do you want her to move on? And he said, I know that that's probably what she needs to do. Mm-hmm. That's the healthy yeah, version of yes. Yes. But honestly, no. He's okay with her being. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, should of, we be laughing at that? <laughs> I, know, I mean, it's funny because it's the typical response from somebody who's in love with their mate. Right. And they're like, no, I don't want you to move on. Yeah. But I also know I can't give you what you want. You know, <sighs> or what you need in the physical world. But a part of him is like, yes, I want her to move on. But no, I don't want her mm-hmm. to move on. So, yeah, that's very interesting. Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty sad for her, I think. But I also feel like she's just kind of this is just her life. That's yeah. who she is now. Yes. I don't know if she's married now or whatever. Whatever is happening. Either, yeah. There is no one is ever going to replace him yeah. in her heart. And the same thing for him. Mm-hmm. He's still, you know, on the other side, he is still deeply mm. in love with her. Yes. Um, well, he, he has a lot of eighth house energy, both planetary rulers of the eighth house, mm-hmm. Pluto and Mars are in his eighth house. The mm-hmm. eighth house is the house of death, which represents karmic bonds. So that means that when someone like Brandon decides that this is the person i mean it's a it's a true merger like you're merging your souls and so that's why he will not leave her he will never leave her and and when she passes on their souls will go and maybe they'll rematerialize in the physical form in some way and reconnect and and finish their karmic path with one another or continue it it's interesting that you said that because I asked him if he has reincarnated. Yeah. Yes. He said no. He's waiting for her. He has not. Yeah. I imagine. I mean, probably. He's waiting for her. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Yes. Um, Because he said that he he doesn't want to come. He's just saying, I don't want to come back as someone or something that she can't connect with. Mm-hmm. So, because that's the possibility of coming back as, I don't know, like a dog or something, mm, <laughs> you mm. know what I mean? And yeah. Never find each other. So he's, I think he's, he is just going to wait mm. and she's going to probably wait and that'll probably be how they meet up again. So. Sure. Wow. I know. So, but he does say that he watches her sleep, mm-hmm. but she doesn't know it. And he kind of smirked a little bit when he said that. So <laughs> interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of this okay. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody Tell wants me. to know about, right? <laughs> so the first thing I asked him was, did he have any types of, of drug addiction? Because when I started tapping into the film, which is where he died, I started seeing a lot of drugs on set. Hmm. Um, people getting high and things like that, which I mean, this, that's that happens. That's Hollywood. You sure, know, no judgment. It's and just it's the early '90s too. There's yeah, a lot of a lot of that in yeah. the early '90s. So probably a lot of it still. Yeah, sure. Um, of course. Does it ever end? <laughs> no. I guess when you get older. Did they stop growing the drugs? Yeah. No. no. Okay. So <laughs> I think it's always gonna happen. But I just, you know, I, I think about that movie too. Mm-hmm. It's like there's a scene where. You know, these two people are shooting up heroin. Yeah. And, you know, he puts his hands on this woman's arm and you see the heroin like come out of her arm because he's telling her not to do that. Mm -hmm. And it just it's very shocking. But it's like I knew people in the 90s that used heroin. Yeah. And I'm sure people still do. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it just felt very reminiscent to me. Oh, absolutely. I mean, back then it was just kind of. Who isn't doing it was the question. Me? Yeah, me either. I, cause I could barely go get a shot now for anything or get my blood drawn. I feel like I'm going to just pass out. Right. So, and I can't put anything in my nose. Like I just started using mm. nasal spray like a couple of years ago. Oh, wow. Congratulations. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I can't do hard drugs, but. Yes. Um. Yeah. So I, I saw that. So I asked him. Did he have a drug addiction? And he said no. Yeah. 
I don't I don't see that in his astrological yeah. code. I don't. I mean, there's I there's definitely if the planets were reconfigured in another way, I could see it, but mm-hmm. it doesn't look like that. I see him as is actually being really well adjusted. You know, the fact that Venus and Mars are in a positive alignment, that makes sense to me why he was in such a healthy relationship. Yeah. It's a healthy balance between the masculine and feminine. Yeah. You know, he had a really a natural ease about being the man and respecting the woman. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't see the drugs yeah. in here. So, yeah, he was definitely not into it. Um but it was happening around him, you sure. know, and he was non judgmental about it. Just like, whatever, mm-hmm. you guys do what you do. I'm I'm not doing that. Right. So I did ask him, was his death an accident? Mm-hmm. Uh he said no. Oh boy. Death was not an accident. Wow. I asked him, was the bullet meant for him? Uh-huh. And he said yes. Yeah. Uh I asked him, does he know who is responsible? He said yes. Okay. They were not very close to him. Um, and I asked him, why would somebody do that to him? Mm-hmm. And he said he saw something that he wasn't supposed to see. And he didn't say what that was? So he didn't get specific, but I'm feeling and hearing counterfeit money, money laundering uh-huh. of some sort. Mm-hmm. And I do know that the film was under budget. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, well yeah, it was I mean, over budget, but they... They were. I read something where they said budget. it was a low budget, but they were trying to make. Yes. It's like I read something where they said they were trying to make a thirty million dollar film for like twelve million dollars. Exactly. Or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. They were trying to. So they were cutting a lot of corners. There's yes. a lot of weird things that went on on that set. A lot of a lot of uh, accidents. A yep. lot of people getting hurt. I think mm-hmm. a person died on set. Um. So there was a lot of that energy already around mm-hmm. the film. Mm-hmm. And so at first I was like, well, maybe that's just what it was. But he's saying no. Hmm. He's saying there was something else about it. So is he saying that somebody knew that the bullet was in the gun? Yeah, somebody knew that that bullet was in there. And the actor who pulled the trigger was, had no idea. He had he no was idea. just like a patsy. He has nothing to do with yeah. it. Poor guy. I think he's passed on he's now. He's passed on. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I know that that was... He it tormented has not him been able the rest of his to, life. He could never let that go. Um, that was not his fault. He had nothing to do with mm-hmm. it. He was just playing his part, playing yep. his role. He loved Brandon. Yeah, he loved working with him. Um, mm-hmm. So that was that wasn't anything. But what I saw was a conversation between Brandon and a superior on the film mm-hmm. about what he saw, mm-hmm. or about what he he saw or overheard some conversation. And he was concerned because he felt like it would put the film in jeopardy Mm -hmm. some kind of way Mm -hmm. if this was happening. Mm -hmm. This person wasn't responsible for his death. This superior, I'm not going to even mention what role, what part they were in Mm -hmm. the film because that's just giving away. We don't need to do that. Okay. But this was a higher up on the film. And so he talked to one higher up who probably talked to another higher up who said... Hey, this is not going to go. This person can't know about this. Yeah. Hey, he mentioned this to me about this. It's just so interesting yeah. because that makes me just think like they're they're making a film on the cheap. So is the film like the front to launder money where it's like they don't even care if the film's made? Well, according to reports, you know, reading the Internet, they said that they weren't going to finish the movie Mm -hmm. and then they had to do a lot of work to finish the movie Mm -hmm. because it wasn't completed obviously. Right. And they had to figure out how to complete it without Brandon. Well, I wasn't sure if the movie was a front Mm -hmm. or, and a front and, or a way to get the movie finished. Mm -hmm. The, the money laundering, the counterfeit money. If Mm -hmm. that was a way to, to finish to the finish movie. it, yeah. maybe, mm-hmm. or to get things done that they weren't able to get done, mm-hmm. even though they were pretty creative about doing like the car scenes and things like that. I think they used like little miniature cars or yes, something to do totally. that. You know, yeah. they were creative about cutting corners, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it was something was owed to someone. I don't know. Like I'm not sure what that connection is, but hmm. I'm 
and it may not even be money laundering. It may not even be counterfeit money. But that's that's immediately what came in. This came in in the very beginning of his reading. Was that it wasn't an accident. It was not an accident because right after right after he said, I saw something that I wasn't supposed to see, money laundering, counterfeit money came up. And then I asked him, was this the reason that you died? He said, yes. I said, was your death foul play? He said, absolutely. Wow. Wow. So that was the that's what he led with. In the Mm -hmm. beginning of this reading. So interesting. It's very interesting. I don't know if we will ever know. No. And he said it was something that he saw and something that he overheard. He wasn't supposed to hear or see it. He took it back to one of the higher ups. And that person said something to the person who is responsible Mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And I asked him you know, did you have any plans on taking this to the authorities? And he said he hadn't decided yet. Mm -hmm. His main concern was it ruining the chances of the film being made. Mm -hmm. Somebody possibly being arrested or getting in trouble or whatever, being found out and they just scrapped the whole movie. So he didn't want that to happen. And if he had to, I guess he was going to maybe do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe say, hey, this isn't this isn't right or whatever. His ma- it wasn't even about it being right or wrong. He just didn't want it to jeopardize the film. So hmm. with that being said, this higher up that he spoke to doesn't necessarily have anything to do with his death. Like they didn't like make a call or put a hit out. It was just a conversation that was had and then another conversation that was had. And then whoever that conversation was had with. Mm-hmm. that person made a decision about how to handle that situation. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if there was another conversation that wrapped around to Brandon, like a, like a warning. I'm not seeing any warnings. Mm-hmm. I'm not seeing a, Hey, don't ask any more about that. Don't talk anymore. Nobody said anything to him. This was just a, well, I was really kind of confused at first when, when I looked at, where the planets were aligned Mm -hmm. in his astrological code. I'm like, wow, I'm not really seeing anything that's like jumping out at me. Like, why did he die on this day Mm -hmm. at this time? And then I was like, well, you know, let me look at his astro cartography, which is is where that's where you look (laughs) at where the planets are aligned. I did this for you. Remember it's where you're looking at where the planets were transiting, where they're literally transiting over the map. Mm -hmm of the of the world and so i looked at the map of the united states and i looked at where the planets were transiting on the day that brandon was born Mm -hmm. and on the day that brandon was born uranus which is the planet of the unexpected Mm -hmm. was transiting right over wilmington north carolina which is where they were shooting That's where they that were shooting. film. Yeah. And so then it keyed me in. I was like, okay, so what was connecting to his Uranus on that day? Mm-hmm. And what was connecting to Uranus was the North Node mm-hmm. in Sagittarius, which is the truth teller. Interesting. So one way to look at it could be he was telling the truth. Mm-hmm. And because of that, it met an unexpected death. Because his Uranus is in the house of death, the planet of the unexpected, in the house of death, aligning with the North Node, the soul's purpose, in the sign of the truth teller, Hmm. which is opposite from where the North Node was when Brandon was born. It was in Gemini. Hmm. Gemini's about asking questions Sagittarius is about telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So his purpose was to ask questions. He told the truth and it met with an unexpected death. I mean, is that interesting? (laughs) Wow. I don't, I'm just Uh, putting this together right now. I mean, it makes sense from what uh, I picked up from the reading. That mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, yeah, because he Mm -hmm. did. He asked a question like, Hey, what's up with this? I'm seeing or hearing this is, what's going on do mm-hmm. you are you aware of this yes and then the 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 feeling of i need to maybe say something about this so that the film doesn't get jeopardized you know yeah yeah Whew. i know wow and to think that it had to end that way just from asking a question mm. so interesting so i don't know i don't know well 
he didn't really ask a question is according to what you're saying he's well, telling he's, he's people telling hey this yes, is what i saw exactly so maybe that was a way to you know make him be quiet and not keep ask <sighs> and not keep talking about it and not asking keep somebody about else cuz maybe this person that he said something to he didn't never got feedback on what he said so maybe he just maybe he was going to talk to somebody else mm-hmm. you know like well hey what's happening with this so wow. Yeah, and I mean it is, and, and it is interesting. The energy around that film, anyway, was just very dark. You mm-hmm. know, there was a lot of stuff going on. I don't know if it was the, and I should, I could probably uh, delve a little bit deeper in like the location, mm-hmm. like what's what energy is around in that area, mm-hmm. and find out a little bit more about that. Wilmington, Wilmington, North Carolina, North Carolina mm-hmm. um, and just see like what's up with that particular place where they were filming if. Maybe there's an energy from the place itself, mm-hmm. or maybe there's a specific energy around the people who were involved in the film. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but there was a lot of accidents. Yes, a somebody lot. got electrocuted. Yeah, a disgruntled worker drove his truck into the props department. Uh huh. And there's one other accident as well. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up, but. Yes. Yeah. I mean, accidents happen on sets, but this was just like... No, this was, this was just a little bit with accidents. And I do recall somebody... I, I read this part um, that he had cut his hand. Brandon had cut his right. hand yes. on the glass that's actually not... It's the breakaway glass. Breakaway it's glass. not even supposed to cut you. And mm-hmm. he got cut and someone else, one of the other actors said, dude, I don't know, like, you need to be careful. Well, they referred to the... Twilight Zone. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a film where somebody yeah. died. Or yeah. I think multiple people died on that film. Yeah. Yes. That's eerie in itself. To Very even eerie. Mention that. So. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I asked him. I usually try to end with you know any special words that you may have for the people. <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he didn't have any. <laughs> no. I'm he not said, surprised. No. I'm not surprised. I was like, oh, okay. Reason. You don't have any special messages for the <laughs> listeners? He said, no. I said, okay, thanks. Yeah. What do you think that is? Why, why do you, th- uh, you think he's still, is he upset? Is he unhappy in the afterlife? I don't feel like he's upset or unhappy. I just think he's a man of few words. Yes. And I just think he wanted to tell a story and he told it and he's kind of like, nope, I'm good. I don't have any messages for them. Yes. So, sorry, guys. <laughs> so, okay, so a stuntman broke several ribs after falling through the roof. A rigger was executed. Uh, an equipment truck burst into flames. A manual worker had a screwdriver get embedded in his hand. Mm-hmm. And a disgruntled set sculptor drove his car through the props room, destroying it. And a hurricane destroyed several of the sets. So that oh, was, uh, uh, and a carpenter suffered serious burns on his upper body during the first day of filming. Mm-hmm. So, yes, yeah, a lot of. Well, I'm not surprised that he had few words. He's a Capricorn rising, right? Capricorn rising. They're they're reserved when it comes to to people they don't know. Mm-hmm. Now, at the same time, he was very charismatic and and extroverted. He could be because of that first house energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then again, you know, it's Aquarius too, which is is kind of detached. Yeah. So, no hard feelings, Brandon. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that that he uh that he sat with you mm-hmm. and gave you the time. Not that time really Matters no on time. the other side, so there is nothing. <laughs> he didn't have anything. He didn't have anything else going no, on. He didn't That's have like kind of pressing set engagement. It was just like, hey, what's up? Let's talk. Wow, you know, yeah. So I just thought it was hilarious. I was like, do you have any messages, like any life lessons like, that like you want to share? Of words of wisdom. And he's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> cool thank thanks. you i appreciate thanks. your time today sir <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so, fantastic well yes. thank you shara thank you brandon lee mm-hmm. so grateful for your presence and for sharing and thank so, you scott for always confirming and just pulling all of that together because it helps it helps me know that i'm not 
crazy. <laughs> oh no, absolutely, absolutely. So much on point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So much on point, and it's so fun to like go back and watch The Crow, and I mm-hmm. watched some clips of some of his other films. I watched a few of his interviews. And it's really, I just got sad again. I yeah. was like, you know, like I felt like back in 93 when this happened, like, mm-hmm. no, what? Yeah. It was really, it was, that was, it was pretty heavy. Yes. And I feel like everybody was dying around that time. I'm just oh, like, yeah. oh my God. You know, yep. like it was just crazy. It was crazy. But yes. Yeah. But this was, it was, it was really great to connect with his energy. He has very good energy. Absolutely. Really, really, really Absolutely. good clear energy yes when, when i watch him in these interviews i was like you just you get tingles mm-hmm. around you when you hear him talk he's mm-hmm. just so well put together yeah and you know even though he'd been through so much with the loss of his father you know just you you felt like gratitude absolutely with him gratitude yeah. and he was such a hero mm-hmm. in this film the crow mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's like <sighs> yeah okay yes. And so well, next we'll we'll meet with Daddy O. Daddy. Yes. <laughs> Daddy O. <laughs> Daddy O Lee. <laughs> Mr. Bruce Lee. Yes. Sounds good, Shara. Thank you again. Thank you. You've been listening to The Uncharted Territories, where we see the unseen in the world of matter. If you would like to support the podcast, subscribe. We've talked a lot about the subconscious mind and the importance of healing our wounds from the past. As an energy healer and a certified hypnotherapist, I help people understand how the mind works so they can harness the energy of the subconscious and tap into their inner power and make those positive long-term changes in their lives. If you're ready to make that change, you can book a session with me by connecting at opendoorhypnosis.com. I look forward to working with you. If you'd like to learn more about who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and what you're meant to do with your life, contact me, Scott Tajarian, at theweeklytransit.com, and we will take a close, detailed look at your astrological code. My purpose is to help you understand who you are so you can accept, appreciate, and love the divine unique miracle that is you.